Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've just come back from space and I brought an enormous quantity of rubbish with me back in my um, in my little poddy thing here. And it's all and because of the way I've got this set up, it all gets automatically dumped into the uh, into the landing pad here because the pod always seems to land exactly here. And I'm not entirely sure why, but it's consistent. So I'm, I don't know. I've I set up I set up these inserters to grab stuff out and put it into here. Um, and as you can see, it's mostly scrap from um, be, that's been made from making the memory cards and some dead memory cards as well. And, I, and then I just filled my inventory up with barrels and brought as many of them and as much coal as I could back with me as well. So I've attempted to unload space as much as I can. This all then, as I, as I think I've discussed before, um, then ends up on this belt, which takes it along here. It filters the barrels out at some point. Here we go. Here the bar barrels are filtered out and put onto a barrel return belt. And all the scrap and the ore and stuff is then fed down the massive long belt that runs all the way down the length of the bus to here. It joins on with the one that gets all the junk that's unloaded from trains. And then brings it along here to my um, to my recycling facility, which tends to then get massively overloaded and, and then and takes ages to work through the backlog. But it also takes me ages to bring more along. So it kind of balances out. I was having some issues here before with the um, these uh, what do you call it drills had had got had um, would had produced so much um, vulcanite specifically oddly enough that this had backed up. But we've had a train come in and unload it now, so now there's only eighty four thousand <laughs> only. Uh, so that'll see you, yeah. And I, it, I've tried to reprioritize it up here um, so that we use. Yeah, so we use the the vulcanite that's coming in from the train first, and then use the vulcanite that's coming in from space. Because the stuff that's coming from the train is is more or less free, except that it uses rather a lot of electricity. As you can see here, we're using out of the f literally more than half of the energy my base is using, 300 megawatts out of 400 and 500 and something, depending on exactly where it's varied to at that point, is being used by the um, by the core miners. That's crazy. Um, and they're not actually producing anything that useful, because well, I mean, I, I tell you about it, it's all it's all useful, but I mean, yes, we're using the vulcanite to make rocket fuel, uh, so it is useful, but we're also importing it from Miokin, so it's not vital. Uranium, we've got a separate mine for that. Coal, stone, copper, iron, we've got separate mines for all of those. None of this is is actually vital stuff. Um, but that said, it is fire and forget. I can just set these up like this and then just leave them forever. And they will, uh, as far as I'm aware, they will never actually run out of resources. Whereas a normal mine, like this stone mine, which is idle. <laughs> this uranium mine, also idle. Copper mine. These will all eventually run out of resources. And you can, see, you can see this one, all of these that have gone red around the edge here, where the where the patches run out. And there's just a few left in the middle. But it's But it's still full. Because, to be honest, at the moment, I'm not actually getting through that much in the way of resources. Because everything I'm doing is complicated in terms of process and relatively cheap in terms of resources. There's not much coal left here. That one's actually running. I should probably have a, th a think at some point about whether I have enough um, coal mines set up. Because apparently that's what I'm using most of. Um, or at least I have the shortest supply of. Iron and copper are all absolutely fine. So that's a bit of a distraction. This is still unloading, still unloading scrap. Um, much, much more interesting and important. It, oh, and um, also this this machine here is turning the uh, the dead memory cards into um, into scrap, so that they can actually at least be recycled back into into something. Speaking of memory cards, let's have a look up here in in, in orbit. Now this has been going kind of well. I've got the um, I've got the science now being built up to an extent that, as you can see, there's actually, it's not a backlog, it's not buffering all the way back up to the producers, but there is a quantity of astronomic science. I have actually managed to achieve a, a, a reasonable quantity of this, like, so I can start using it for research into, I don't know, aeroframe poles or zone discovery. What is that? What even that is that? Search of planet, moons, and asteroid belts using telescopes. Okay, so I can I can research and discover more. I can I can look into... I don't know. This, what's this one? Astronomic Catalog 2. I could start looking into that, but that's going to need air frame. So yeah, there's. I've, I've unlocked a whole new direction of research at this point, so where I can go in and start researching new and exciting things. So yeah, that's, that's a big step up from where I was before. However, as you may notice, I've, I've got a backlog, but there's none coming along, there's none actually flowing along this belt at the moment, because production has stopped once again. 
So I went in here and I sort of went through and I, as is always the case in Factorio, you start you, you, you start with a thing you're trying to make and then you look back through all the steps until you find where the backlog is and you fix that. So for example, these ones, these are not a problem. It takes um, a little while. It takes 30 seconds to make four of these significant, to make to run this production but it makes four significant data and that keeps this going for a while and it takes so much input that that's not the bottleneck likewise i don't think this was the bottleneck either or this one or this one the bottleneck it turned out was the telescopes because these take quite a long time these take a full five seconds to produce one frame and then these swallow up 12 frames in order to get data so it's um 12 times five, six so it takes a full minute for a telescope to produce enough frames for one of these to run and then these run in 5.8 seconds so yeah the tele i needed more telescopes so i built up some of that i then ran into a couple of issues the first one was the cooling fluid so all of this stuff basically everything along yeah literally all of these machines use the minus 100 degrees c co uh, cold thermofluid to in order to chill them down for, to run and i've got enough of that now but that's because these have stopped but in order to get that i had to extend my hyper chillers up here hyper coolers sorry and i had to extend my normal coolers here so there's got crazy numbers of these now and that one's not power uh i'll probably fix that next time i go to space uh yeah, so I've got a crazy number of these, just in a desperate attempt to get enough throughput of the thermofluid to keep it cool. And that has actually got to the point where it's buffered it all up because I've, I've run out of everything else. Um, so the the, uh, the reason this has stopped now, and we've got the buffers of those things, is these machines that are building up the photo frames for the telescopes have stopped because they require light oil. And I didn't bring very much of it up with me because, well, I looked at the recipe and thought that's not very much light oil. It only requires eight or ten or something ten so that's a tenth of a barrel but i didn't realize quite how many of these frames i was going to get through it it's been a bit bit crazy so yeah i need to bring up a lot more light oil now i've been thinking about whether there's a better way to do this so light oil you can make from um you can make you can get to take it out of barrels which is what i've been doing so far we've got we've got a light oil unbarreling machine some here um, that's taking taking the light oil barrel, uh, barrels out of wherever they were. In fact, I wonder if it has actually run out. It probably has, um, and then dumping them onto into the um, into this pipe that takes them off to wherever wherever it's needed. It's a bit. It's a bit this is all a bit of a tangle. And it's a bit of a horrible mess, and I wish I'd done it all differently. And oh my goodness! But never mind. It's um it, it's working. I'm not going to try and fix it now, just because I don't want because it, it, yeah headache. But I'll try. But next time I make a, a space base, I'll try and make things a bit tidier and a bit more organised. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is unbar unbarreling them. Now we all know about the problems with barrels. As you um, as you use barrels for stuff, you take up a barrel. It doesn't have very much in it, and you then have a barrel to deal with. So now I've got this um, recycling facility here that's taking all of the used barrels. And what and what this is this this cable and this comparator is doing is because I'm also aware that barrels are needed for um, one of the I think it's I think it's a rocket science. You you. Um, these these things end up getting put in a barrel um, so they are actually needed so I've got this box here requesting 470 it should be 480 really to fill the chest up but never mind I've, I've said 470 and then this one is requesting barrels until it's got uh, until it's got as many as are down here so the hope is that this one will get priority will always be kept at 470 and then any spares will be put into this one and then it'll crunch them up and spit them into here um, yeah, so that is, as far as I'm aware, is basically working. I should probably make that a green chest and that a blue chest. Um, I'll talk about that in a moment, though. So this is now crunching through them. It's destroyed. It, it's recycled 3,200 barrels back into steel, and we got one steel plate each time, which is probably a terrible ratio compared to what they'd cost to make. Um, let's see if I can find them. Where are empty barrels? Why can I not find them? Let's look in here. Empty barrel. Oh, it only takes one steel to make it. Okay, so that isn't actually a, a, a. I don't lose anything in this. It just sort of. It just converts them into steel, and that means I can either keep the steel up here, and I've got 5.4 thousand steel up here now, probably because I've recycled 3,000 barrels, um, 
but I've, and I've only got down to two, I've got two two point five thousand barrels left. So, so my point is with this that yes, I, I can bring barrels up here with with fluid in them and then deal with them. And the steel packs down quite nicely. I could always take it back to Norvis if it gets too much. And I think there are a few things along here that do actually use steel, so it, maybe it'll get used up a little bit. But it's barrels are barrels are a faff. They're big, they're clunky, and it's just they're just a bit annoying. So. I don't really want to use them if I can avoid it. What are the alter so what are the alternatives? Well, let's see. How can you make light oil? You can make light oil by getting it out of a barrel. So that's what I've talked about. It's not great. You've got the barrels to deal with, and barrels are inefficient. You can make it from crude oil, but you also have heavy oil and petroleum gas side products, and you have need water for it. So that's fair enough. I can... I could ship crude oil up here, but that, again, that'd be barreled, so that, that'd be no help. Um, and I'd need water as well, but again, um, I, water I can get here by in the form of ice, that's not so bad. But I've got the side products, so that's not so great. Um, there's an alternative recipe here that is more heavy oil. Uh, no, that's, even, that's, that's significantly worse. Don't want that. Coal liquefaction. Now, coal could be shipped up here um, by the delivery cannons. In fact, it already is, so we've got coal on hand. We've got as much of that as we want. Um, we would need heavy oil, though, so... Um, Oh, but that just goes round and round in circles, so that's not too bad. It does require water, but I can make I can get water up here and then boil it. It's not not impossible, um, so that's a possibility. Um, and that creates lots of heavy, a bit of light, and a bit of petroleum gas. So the problem here, I suspect, would be I get too much petroleum gas and I wouldn't know what to do with it. And I get lots of heavy oil, but that that I could then use this recipe to crack into light oil. So oh, I don't know. Coal liquefaction in space seems kind of silly but then shipping oil up in barrels also seems kind of silly I'll I'll go through and I'll do the maths and I'll try and work out which would actually be better of these two because I am there's something sort of pleasing about doing this sort of thing up in space uh, I would need to start using biochemical facilities though um, instead of instead of oil refineries and biochemical facilities yeah okay so I'd need to start making biochem facilities but I can do that it takes quite a lot of resources to make it but yeah it's not so no, that's not a, not really a problem they also run much faster than chem plants and much much no that's the wrong thing ah uh, what am I doing no, that's liquid rocket fuel light oil light oil um that one that's what I need to do oh, and it's a lot faster than the oil refinery as well so I wouldn't need many of them, and I don't think the demand on light oil is that high. So that I think might be a thing I could do. This this is starting to get more and more tempting the more I talk about it. So I think I'll probably be doing that in a, in a future episode. So one thing that I don't believe I've talked so that that's that's essentially why this has stopped. It's ground to a halt because I've run out of oil for this um, for this system. Now I haven't run out of anything else for a while, um, and this is something I don't think I've talked about yet, and I'm I'm actually quite pleased with. I've got this um, delivery cannon chest here that's now receiving basically everything. There we go. There's some iron. Um, basically everything I need for this for this base. So it's keeping all of my supplies, um, all of my supplies of raw ingredients, up to date and um, and and full. And the way I've done that, it's a little bit silly. But up here, I've got this rank of um, of delivery cannons, and they can. There we go. There's the iron one going off again, and they're just, they're bringing in. This is here where I'm building the building the actual delivery cannon capsules, shoving them on this belt, and then these these cannons are just taking whatever they need. And I'm using the standard system where I feed the signal back, and then I'm feeding it up here up all these up the, these pylons on this red cable from down down here. Is this one? Yeah, this one where the where the signal's coming from. So so it's got the same signal. It knows about what's up there in space, and it will then just and then these cannons will just keep firing. And in order to keep that working sensibly, I have to make sure that the rocket doesn't load up with those things. So I've gone in here, I've deprogrammed these inserters and um, the coal one down here. So they won't, and the glass one, wherever that is, all the way around it. Uh, and the water barrels as well for future future planning. So the plan is that um, the rocket will now just be responsible for taking up things that are a bit more complicated. So things like science packs that I've made on the ground. Um, red circuits or something I get through I got through a lot of while I was building the memory cards so those sort of things will still be taken up by rocket but the raw ingredients can be sent up by delivery cannon capsule which is which are much much cheaper they just use basic ingredients whereas the rocket uses all kinds of nonsense so they're, they're just yeah they're not practical these these feel much more efficient 
So I mentioned water. So something I'm going to need to do is start is make make some changes to my um, my frost base here. Now there are two possibilities. One is to put in another delivery cannon um, here. Uh, squeeze it in somewhere around here somehow with a load of redesign um, in order to get another input from here that's firing at perhaps directly at the space station. However, I suspect there aren't actually any of those up here on... Um, there aren't any spare delivery cannons up here because why would there be? Um, oh no, I did leave one actually, so I could do that. But secret option B was setting this one up to fire at Norvis and having a... Um, a, a, land, a uh, delivery cannon landing chest sort of probably here I guess and loading into this one so we'd take the ice from frost to Norvis load it into this delivery cannon and then fire it back into orbit and have another one next to it that'll be firing at, um, at Miokin where the, where the water is at, it was originally needed it's, it's double handling and it's going to be inefficient in use of these delivery cannon capsules but as I just said they're not exactly expensive it's what goes into one of these? Ten, some copper. That's about five copper, I think, because you get two copper for cables for each copper. Some explosives, which is some sulfur and some coal. Heat shielding, which isn't too bad. Low density structures. Again, I've got enough of those. So it's it's wasteful, but I think it might be the easiest way to do it, and it'll save me going back. To, it saves me going back to frost to get that set up and and or do, do all the, do all the fiddling over remotely. And it means in the future when I need another planet with needs a water supply I can just set up another cannon on here on Norvis and start firing from there without having to again faff around on frost again so the more planets I end up sending it to the less wasteful it becomes because it's an n plus one uh, I need n plus one delivery cannons um, although that said it's, it's n plus one delivery cannons but it's always two twice it's always twice as many capsules so but it's but it's easier if it's down here I'll have a bit of a think about that because it feels quite neat having this sort of depot in the middle that does all the shipping. But on the flip side, it's also slightly wasteful in resources. So I'm I'm, I'm not entirely decided, to be honest. If you could change these, have to have it sort of progress, so say, if, you, if, you, if, you were, if it was a way, a way I could use the circuit network to change where the uh, delivery cannon fired to, that'd be quite nice. But I suspect that'd be extremely complicated. <laughs> So where was I? Oh yes, I was talking about how that's um, dropping the, dropping all of the ingredients in into uh, Norvis orbit, into this uh, chest here, which is linked up to absolutely everything else. So we've got all the things we need. We'll just be shipped up here, and as they get used, it'll keep it'll keep it keep it loaded, and the and the um, the logistics bots are sorting everything out as before. Which is, so this is all working pretty nicely, I'd say. Um, I've expanded the solar out because I was running out of power. Um, I think that's pretty much what I've been doing. So that brings you up to date on uh, <laughs> on Lawrence Place uh, Factorio space exploration. As I say, the there's a couple of things to think about for the next episode. It's oil, how I'm going to get oil up here, and how I'm going to get, and whether I'm going to get water up here, and if so, how. Um, and in fact, I'm going to need to at some point because there are a few things that do use water, like this. In fact, it's literally just this making this um, cosmic water that gets used for making. Um, space manufactories and oh, and thermofluid. So, so yeah, we are going to get through a certain amount of it. Oh, uh, and run out of sulfur as well. That's something I could probably ship up by delivery cannon. That's that. I'll, I'll I'll do that as well. Okay. So, thanks for watching. There's my to-do list for the next um, couple of episodes. We've got getting getting light oil up here somehow, probably by probably from coal, but we'll see. Organizing water delivery because I've currently broken it, but I want to make it better. And um, sulfur, yeah, getting sulfur up here as well because that that seems to be a thing that I need and don't have. And that once that's done, once that's done, I'll probably find another bottleneck in the whole process. But in theory, once that's done, I'll get the um, astronomic sciences running out of here, and I'll feed them down here into this system. So one of the things I've been looking at with the um, the astro science, that's not where I want to look in here. I'm going to carry on talking because I've thought of something else to talk about. <laughs> The astro science it takes this significant data and that's the most expensive part of it because it takes it takes these um, 36 astronomic insights each of which takes one catalog which uh, two catalogs which, uh, yeah so it, this these are the most expensive part of it uh, essentially but I believe but there are 15 ways to 15 ways to make the um, 
significant data. You can do a astronomic simulation. You can do energy simulator. Blah 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 blah. You can do any. You can do each of these with any of the different types of um, research path, and they're all equally expensive at this point. So it still takes 36 of them. But if you start mixing them, so if I use blue and pink, it, okay, it requires even colder thermofluid, and I haven't researched how to do this yet. But in theory. That way you're still putting in 36 um, of these, but you're getting 6 out instead of 4 out. So suddenly it's 50% more, more productive. And the same is true for this one and this one. And presumably all the combinations are in there. Then if you get onto 3 of them, you're making twice as much, but still only having 36 inputs. So I think it will probably be worth trying to get more, trying to sort of broaden my um, my science horizons and have a look into biological or and or energy insights as well. Uh, just try and get that a bit more efficient. Um, and again, all the combinations here. And or if you get all four of them, then it's five times as efficient. So, yeah, uh, no, two and a half times as efficient. It was four four to ten. So, yeah, you can you can get boosts in your your in your, in your efficiency like this. I wonder if there's also. Yeah, so if I, if I can generate, I don't know how much harder this is going to be, but if I can make astronomic catalogues and broad astronomic catalogues, which is catalog 1 and catalog 2, essentially, then instead of getting two of these, I get six, but I feed in twice as many things. So it comes down to how difficult a broad astronomic metric catalogue is to make. And it, the answer is slightly harder. It requires four bits of data and different types of data these might be much harder data to get as well we'll have to look into that but the thing is as you go up the chain it gets more and more efficient so at this point we put in four of the four things and some blank data cards we get 22 out so this is going to be much much more efficient um yeah so that's uh that's going to make producing science on mass a bit easier I think and the question is do I want to start doing do I want to start going broad or deep and that's going to be an interesting question an interesting decision to make I suspect I'll probably go broad first maybe I'll I'll start another one of these that goes off in a different direction perhaps or maybe I'll just carry on off the end of this bus and just start work and work my way over here I don't I don't know I'm, I'm not really sure what's better at the moment I suspect probably to carry on along this bus because I think there's going to be a lot of things on here that I'm going to be reusing. Uh, top of the list is these data cards, which I now have enough of, as you'll see if it comes up here. There's enough that it's got to this point, and then it's um, it's blocked up the uh, the belt because it's sorry it's turned this machine off because the belt's full. I've also run out of red circuits to make make any more, but it had just got to the point where I've got enough in inverted commas uh, when it got there. So yeah, that's going well. Um, yeah, so that's, yeah, I'm not, the next episode I probably won't have done any more science. I'll have got this up and running a bit more smoothly and a bit more steadily. I'll probably have sent up another rocket full of, um, red, uh, red, red, red chips in order to get this going smoothly. But otherwise, I think that's, um, I think that's going to be everything for the next, oh, whew, several episodes. <laughs> but we'll see how it goes. Thanks for watching, I hope you'll join me, and I'll see you next time.